This video is brought to you by the following sponsors. Number one, read the line. You will behold the glory of my sacred wood. That's not him. Okay. Number two, read the line. You will behold the glory of my sacred wood. Absolutely not. Okay. Number three. You will behold the glory of my sacred wood. That's him. Every year, one in five gamers is accosted by an elf. We're tired of elves. What's up, Lorehounds? It's Cooper here. We're inside the WB Games booth. We're checking out, uh, we're hanging out with Kate from Turbine, uh, checking out some Lord of the Rings stuff, and we've been discussing the, the whole free-to-play transition. So, what's it going to mean for the, the newcomer to the game? Because I'm sure there's going to be a flood of them. Absolutely. We're look, really looking forward to opening up as much of the great quality in the game that we can to free players. The entire epic story in the Shadows of Angmar is going to be free for all players who come in. You're going to be able to go anywhere in areas door that you want. Of course, be careful with the monsters, they may kill you, but um, but in general you're going to be able to explore a lot of it and you, as you go you'll run across opportunities to buy stuff in the store if you want to enhance your game experience, but it's completely optional. So we have up to level 20 I think or, or you guys announced would be free like entirely, you can do everything that's available right yeah, now. Exactly, all of the Shire, Breelands and Arid Lewin is going to be completely free, all the side quests, all the main epic quests that tell the story of the Fellowship. Then as you get into the Lowlands, that's when it's going to be epic story is going to be completely available and all the monster kill in the landscape is going to be available. But then there are going to be side quests that you can choose to buy. Each content pack has about 80 to 200 quests and there are about 10 of them. And I think it's going to be a real easy choice for people as they go to decide when it feels right to open up the next area for them or if they're perfectly content just to play all the great content in the epic story. So in DDO it's pretty clear how you guys can break everything up because it's just uh, a lot of instance dungeons and stuff so in Lord of the Rings how how is that being broken up since it's more of a you know a, a standard open world yeah. kind of thing Again, you can walk basically from one end of the Shire all the way to the Holland Gate without any limitations. You won't be able to enter specific instances, right, unless you're on the right quest chain, the right quest event. And again, for the epic instances, those are going to be completely available. You just need to play through it. And for um, the optional instances that come with some of the side quests, when you enter a door or you talk to an NPC that's locked, there'll be an opportunity to buy right there. You click on it, the store opens, you put it in your, you know, your um, checkout, you check out, and it's there for you. It's just it takes basically two seconds to get into any locked piece of content. And we're going to be able to earn these points for free as well, like as a free-to-play subscriber, or sorry, a free-to-play person, we can even, you know, earn it through playing? Exactly. So you're going to be able to earn points in games through completing deeds, and there are some quests that are going to give you turbine points, and obviously you're going to be able to buy them as well through a credit card or PayPal or other, you know, ways of through the main game, but it's all integrated into the game. You just open the store and you're off. That's fantastic. What, what about the lifetime guys? So what are they getting out of the deal? Since you know they felt that you know they own everything, and now it's like they they're because they're still going to have to buy some things, right? Well, the only things that they're going to have to buy are the sort of the classic expansions that are above and beyond the lifetime. Lifetimers and VIPs get all of the content and systems that come with the game as part of their their subscription. So for lifetimers, that doesn't mean any additional recurring charges, but obviously for the month to month folks, and then that comes with that their fee. But the nice thing about it is, is that both lifetimers and VIPs are going to get about 500 turbine points a month. We're going to test that during beta and refine that number, but it's something there. And the expansion packs that exist right now are in the store. So for people who haven't bought Siege of Mirkwood yet, they're going to be able to use the points that they're accruing just for being part of the game, you know, in, in able to purchase that, and it may actually be a better offer long term for the lifetimers. Yeah, it's true because if they're not paying for the expansions anymore, if they use their points that they get. Yeah, you know, it's really been critical for us that the lifetimers and the you know subscribers feel like this is a great transition. It's you know it opens up the game to a much larger community, a community that we think is going to be really good for the game overall, and we really want them to be happy in this new world because you know their knowledge and their you know, participation in the game is part of what makes Lotro a wonderful place to be. And without them, we would be very sad. So we're making an effort all throughout beta. And I 
I encourage everybody to check out the beta who's a player right now. It's pretty much just open today, yeah, right? Today, yeah. So Lotro.com for anybody who hasn't signed up yet. Um, you know, it's a great place to check out. Give us your feedback. We're listening. We want this to be really fun for everybody. As, as great as DDO became after it went. So uh, speaking of that, what was DDO success the thing that precipitated Lotro going to the free-to-play? Because it already had a pretty decent subscriber base and stuff. Absolutely. Lotro has been very successful as a subscription game. You know, ultimately what, you know, we've been watching the trends for a while and the choice to make DDO free-to-play was because we really wanted to grow that community and we thought this was the best way to do it. Given the success that DDO has had, it felt like it was the right next step for Lotro. We've had such an improvement in, you know, the number of players that log in. Again, there's been a great, you know, harmony between our tenured players in DDO and the new players in DDO and we want to see that in Lotro too. It's just, you know, the more players there, I think the more fun everyone's going to have. Can we expect the content to come at the same pace that DDO increased after it went to the free-to-play model? Well, we're certainly different games. We have to figure out the content model. But what we can definitely say is, is that you know, DDO has been able to really use the, the change to provide a lot more content for players. And Lotro absolutely is dedicated to bringing wonderful stories and really rich new areas. And we're going to bring them often. So we're introducing Enidwith, which is the area just south of Oregi and back in Eriador in this content update. And you're going to be able to continue the story from book one earlier this year in book two that's launching this fall so that we're going to be able to take the Rangers down as they're going to meet up with Aragorn and Isengard next year. Awesome, that's fantastic. Uh, thanks a lot and we I can't wait to get home and actually jump in the beta client. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Kate. See you in game.